This is Pass Part 2. Good morning. I thank you for joining us. I'm Renee Allen. This morning, police are investigating a bomb threat made at both target locations yesterday. The investigation comes after News 10 received an email with the threat. Neither locations were evacuated and no explosive devices were found. Several other targets across the country, however, were evacuated after our sister station also received a cryptic email with similar threats. Take a look. About 515, the Lafayette Police Department received information that there was an active threat at both target locations in Lafayette. Um, we were we were uh, assigned officers to each location. They responded to uh, the locations and they got with the staff along with the Lafayette uh, Fire Police Department, Fire Department as well. They uh, also responded to that location. This is the email sent to multiple news agencies in Louisiana around 4.30 Saturday afternoon. The email starts by saying, quote, Target has betrayed the LGBTQ plus community. The sender then goes on to say, if you are not with us, you are against us. That is why we placed a bomb in each of your locations. Evacuate now as this is only to cause economic damage. This is a warning. After News 10 notified Lafayette police of the email, officers were sent to both locations. A conjoint effort was conducted between all departments, including the staff of Target at uh, the South Side location. They were comfortable with uh, the response. They reviewed their CCTV footage, which is a uh, basically camera footage and whatnot, and they were okay with the response. Uh, there was no further assistance needed over there. At this point in time, our offices and the uh, fire department are still at the north side location, actively doing a sweep of the location. A string of emails threatening targets have been sent out across the country, including one Saturday to our sister station, KFOR, a new station in Oklahoma City. The email they received starts by writing, we are going to play a game and includes the date of April 19th, 1995, which is the same date as the deadly Oklahoma City bombing. It goes on to say two of these target locations have bombs in them. We hid the bombs inside some product items. The bombs will detonate in several hours. Guess which ones have the bombs? Time is ticking. Several targets in Oklahoma City were then evacuated, though there were no explosions. Back here in Lafayette, Corporal Ken Handy with Lafayette Police says they were not aware of the bomb threats in other cities. Uh, this is the first of our knowledge today, um, but we're going to conduct an investigation on the actual complaint that occurred today at both locations. It'll be assigned to the Criminal Investigations Division, and uh, we'll assign it to a detective who will conduct a thorough investigation, and we'll see what happens from there. Again, no bombs were found. Both locations were back open by last night. Then a Lafayette man is dead after a crash on I-10 near Rain. 30-year-old Kevin Michael Johnston lost his life. That crash happened late Friday night near mile marker 86. Rain police say Johnson struck a GMC and was ejected from his vehicle, then fatally struck by another vehicle. Witnesses say Johnston had been driving erratically for several miles before the initial crash. It's unclear if impairment or a medical condition was the cause. Rain police, of course, are investigating. Governor John Bay Edwards signs new bills into law from the 2023 legislative session. He signed nearly two dozen of them as of this past Friday. A few notable ones include a law that redefines what an automatic weapon is, toll exemptions for students traveling on ferries, roads and bridges, establishing uh -huh, an official state net. I'm happy with much most of the work that was done uh, in this session. It wasn't easy. What's important at the end of the day is that we came together, we made significant progress, and that's going to help continuing moving Louisiana forward. The session was heated at times, of course. Some lawmakers say they were furious with the budget vote during the last minutes of the session. Many saying they did not get enough time to review the amendments put on the bills. Then Abbeville Police Department received a grant for nearly $40,000 for the installation of license plate readers. News 10's Rodrika Taylor spoke with the chief about how this money will help the department tackle crime. Chief Mike Hardy says the license plate readers are another tool the department can use to solve crimes. <laughs> to keep up with, with crime nowadays you have to be 
uh, able to use the, the modern equipment. Chief Hardy says the previous administration applied for the grant and since he is in office, he inherited it. All we had to do is line up the in installs and everything. He says the department is a part of a Motorola group, unlike other license plate readers, which are on poles. The cameras are on police cars. It could be a kidnapper. It could be anything. You know, if you're looking for, for a certain license number, the thing catches all of them. Everything that goes in front of it is red. The chief says two police units have the cameras installed, and they can gather a lot of information. We can park these vehicles where they look like just a parked car and they can document every vehicle in and out of a parking space of a, a garage uh, it just it could be anything walmart parking lot another good thing about being with motorola is they are partnered with departments all over the country if somebody commits a crime and we know their license number we put the license number in and if they leave here and go anywhere where uh, a department has some of these lprs if they see them They'll document it or they'll get a hit on it. You know, it, it'll be on a hot list. And when they get a hit on it, we know right where our car is. In Abbeville, Rodrigo Taylor, KLFY News 10. So in St. Martin Parish, St. Martinville leaders want to continue their efforts in making the city cleaner for everyone. As News 10's Dawson D'Amico reports, the city is applying for a half million dollar grant to help rejuvenate dilapidated properties around the community there. Take a look. The St. Martinville government is looking to refurbish homes around the community like the one behind me to help maintain a cleaner and safer city. The city of St. Martinville is applying for a clearance grant worth up to $500,000. We want to make our citizens aware of this grant and the application process. St. Martinville Mayor Jason Willis has made it known his main goal as mayor is to clean up his community. Efforts in keeping the city clean have already been awarded with a first place victory in the Louisiana Cleanest City Contest at the regional and state level. Mayor Willis says this move is one more step in the right direction of continuing the momentum already established. This is huge for our city, um, but we want this to bleed within our communities. We don't want it, like I said, to just to be in a certain area that people come through our city to see. We want to be able to go through the neighborhood. The grant comes from federal funding and all refurbishment will be free of charge for the owner of the blighted property. Mayor Willis encourages anyone who needs the help but cannot afford it to reach out to the city for assistance. This is huge and I stress, you know, I want, I need participation from, from the citizens. Uh, we will help you do the application. There's no income required, um, you know, so it's no brainer, you know, so just please come forward. Let us help you get in touch with us, and I think this would be great for the city. If you're interested in having your home be a part of the refurbishing list, contact City Hall at your earliest convenience. In St. Martinville, Dawson D'Amico, KLFY News 10. So St. Martinville will be holding open public meetings for citizen input. You can find the dates and locations of those meetings on our website, mm -hmm. KLFY.com. And speaking of St. Martinville, commercial crop fishermen are feeling left behind as Congressman Clay Hickens works towards rebuilding the shrimp industry. News 10's Zeng Hoke sat down with a crop fisher who says he still has not seen a profit in year 2023. As Congressman Clay Higgins makes efforts to help the shrimping industry, commercial craw fishermen in Acadiana feel they're being ignored. You know, we'd like to see help towards the commercial craw fishermen as they are helping the shrimpers, you know. It's not just the shrimpers that are in need of what's going on, you know. I don't know if, if they're looking at a tariff or what they're looking at to try to help them, but we need that help too. You know, we, we get no help. In a letter to the Department of Agriculture, Higgins requested the federal government purchase Gulf shrimp to prop up prices and minimize the influx of imported shrimp, helping the industry in Louisiana. Bienvenu says the commercial crawfish industry has struggled in recent years, even failing to see a profit so far in 2023, only seeing a price of 40 cents per pound of smaller sized crawfish. These are 1970 prices, you know. Everything goes up, but crawfish is the only thing that goes down. You know, it's a, and it's amazing. It's one of the most spectacular, delicious delicacies we have in Louisiana. And the public pays for it, but we don't get paid to go catch it hardly. You know, it's a struggle for us. 
I've never caught up to where I could save money. Bienvenu says fellow crawfishers supported Higgins in his run for office, but with his recent statement only involving the shrimping industry, he feels betrayed. Bienvenu still hopes changes can be made that help both the shrimp and crawfish industries rebuild. If Clay wants to do something, let him put crawfish in with the shrimp. You know, he don't have to like us. He can keep not liking us if he wants, but he's supposed to be doing the right thing. We elected him to do the right thing. And we just ask him for that. Give us the help. Don't have to like us. Jesus said, they'll hate you, they'll hate me too. So. As commercial crawl fishermen continue to struggle, Bienvenu says he's tired of empty promises, and in the future, he hopes for action. In St. Martinville, I'm Zane Hogue for KLFY News 10. And just a reminder for you, Acadia, and Vermilionville is holding their annual Creole Culture Day today. It's happening from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. This free family friendly event celebrates all of the contributions the Creole culture has made to Acadiana and will feature live music, arts, crafts, food demonstrations, and much, much more. And speaking of fun, summer is here, and that means people are